Many computer science students find themselves wondering whether or not they should finish their undergraduate degree and jump straight into the workforce, or if they should take an extra year or two and also get a master's degree in computer science. How do I know this? Both because I've seen you guys comment to make this video, and also because I remember coming up against the same dilemma myself. So the question today is, is a master's degree in computer science even worth it? Most times my answer is pretty simple, but there are some nuances. And so in this video, we're gonna be exploring both good and bad reasons to get a master's in computer science, alternatives that I'd suggest instead, and what I went about doing in my own career. So the first thing I'd like to touch on is honestly why I feel like most people shouldn't get a master's in computer science. The first thing is that there tends to be this fallacy that I see that the master's is sort of going to lead to more lucrative career opportunities for that student compared to their bachelor degree counterpart. The reality is that this often isn't true. Most master's graduate students also join companies at the same new grad level that bachelor students join at. I post about 100 job announcements every single month on LinkedIn across internships and new grad roles. So believe me when I say, most roles share a very similar requirement between bachelor's and master's degree kids, and that usually ends up in the same exact role, title, and compensation. There are some cases where a master's degree student may be compensated a little bit higher, but this number is usually very negligible. The other reason that I tend to advise against this is that starting to work after graduation is really a blessing when you sort of A-B test it compared to the route of going down the master's degree. This allows you to start paying off your student loans quicker, it allows you to increase your earning potential simultaneously because you're already getting years of experience under your belt. And at that same time, you're getting practical experience, which is helping you with your next promotion. On the contrary, a master's degree is rarely ever the criteria for who gets the job or who gets the promotion. In fact, it often doesn't really matter, and in a lot of software engineering recruiting, the technical degree, whether bachelor's or master's, act as a bit more of a box to check off rather than the specific thing that people are looking for. I like to refer to this as the technical check and I'm here to say that the bachelor's degree in computer science, if you have one, certainly meets the technical check. And you actually don't have to take my word for it. There was a study done on the anatomy of what it's like to be a CTO. And for those who don't know, CTO is like chief technical officer. And it typically is the role that a really stellar software engineer could rise to the C-suite and will often be a chief technical officer of the company. And the report found that only one in five CTOs actually even have a master's degree which means that we're looking at essentially the most lucrative, the most technical or competitive role that you could find within the sort of tech scene. And most folks don't have a master's degree. So if you can become a CTO, then you could definitely become a mid or senior or even staff level software engineer without that degree. And finally, you have to play the game of opportunity cost. Taking additional student loans and going sort of in the negatives from where you started compared to going and landing an entry-level job, maybe even a less lucrative job than the one you'll land after your master's degree. Now having a year or two years of earning potential taking you up into the upside and letting you pay off your student loan debt rather than accumulating more typically sets you on a better head start for your life. But it's not all bad and master's degree programs are around for a reason. They do provide tangible value to certain subsets of people based on where they're at in their journey. The first group of people that I do feel like should consider a master's is a current undergraduate student who might have gone into recruiting late or maybe just didn't have the hottest recruiting seasons up until this point and they really want an extra year or two to turn things around, to get a better internship, to get a better new grad offer and really kickstart their career at a significantly higher level than they may be currently at. I wouldn't recommend this if we're talking the difference between you working at Amazon and you want a master's degree so you can work at Google. It's not really how this works, but if you want a master's degree to give you more opportunities to land maybe big tech internships, that is something to consider. And if you're one of these students, the first thing I recommend you doing is seeing what kind of master's programs your university offers. Because I went to UCLA and I know that UCLA offers this sort of take an extra year as a current computer science undergrad student and they'll give you a master's degree essentially. Uh, and I know a buddy of mine at Stanford also did the same thing. And so this kind of program is pretty common and it's the most stress-free because you're already at the same school and you don't have to acclimate to an entirely new environment. The other bucket of people which this is helpful for are folks who have no technical undergrad degree and they're an existing developer. I go back and forth on this one, but 
speaking with some of these folks, I often see a desire to hedge themselves for future credibility. Essentially, what I mean by that is that they're currently a developer and things may be going well now, but at one point or another, they sort of felt like not having any sort of technical degree may hinder them at some point. I can't speak to what exactly that looks like in the future. I can say that my mentor over at Netflix was a senior software engineer who was an absolutely amazing mentor, an amazing engineer who had no technical computer science background and was actually a chiropractor in the past. And so my data doesn't show that to exist, but that is one of the buckets of people who I do see find master's degrees worth it. The other one is if you're doing a career switch and you have no technical undergrad, the way that these typically look for career switchers in the software engineering space now is that you'll usually end up going to a boot camp and try to find a sort of job right after that. But one of the things that this sort of puts you back into the categories is now if you are a boot camp graduate who landed a job, you've essentially become the first group of people that I talked about where you're an existing developer without a technical undergrad. And so I guess that's sort of up to you at that point where if you want to hedge yourself for that future credibility and how a technical undergrad, how relevant it seems to you. And finally, I'm not here to bash graduate degrees and programs in general because a ton of really incredible research that has pushed the needle and computer and tech innovation has come from academic institutions. And so if you are interested in research or going particularly deep on a niche technical field, then I do think graduate degrees are absolutely for you. And in that case, you may even want to consider a PhD, which really takes things up a notch. And now I want to give a couple suggestions to the person, to the earlier version of myself, who is still sort of on the fence, understands the pros, understands the cons, and still isn't sure whether or not they want to do a master's degree or if they want to do something else instead. The first suggestion I have is to consider actually getting a business degree, sort of like an MBA to pair on top of your already technical undergrad instead of doing a master's in CS. The reason I say this is that a lot of really influential people, most notably say Mark Andreessen, who is the founder of A16Z, current billionaire and a very sort of prolific founder and venture capitalist within the Valley, actually writes at his personal blog where he has a blog post that's about sort of his guide on career planning. He explicitly mentions that quite a few people in business have paired a liberal arts undergrad degree with an MBA. They seem to do just fine, but I think that's a missed better opportunity. Much better would be an MBA on top of an engineering or math undergraduate degree. People with that combination are invaluable and there aren't nearly enough of them running around. This is pretty compelling to me at least uh, on why an engineering or sort of technical underground with a paired master's degree, with a business master's degree would be a pretty interesting combination to say the least. The other thing you may want to consider is whether or not you want to do a part-time master's program instead of seeing the decision as so binary. This would allow you to actually enter the workforce immediately so you don't really miss out on the same type of opportunity cost. And it also has some additional pros. For one, your company may have some kind of subsidizing of tuition or reimbursing you for tuition and a program that you could leverage. I know at one point Google was reimbursing up to $10,000 of tuition for their employees if they're doing things like getting a master's degree, which is a really sizable chunk, especially given the tuition of some of these master's degree programs. So I think the frame here is that it lets you scratch the itch or kind of get whatever ROI you were hoping to achieve out of the master's program. And you do sacrifice maybe a bit more of your time and it will take us a little bit more work. But I do think that best of both worlds approach is an interesting one if you're someone who's going down the master's path. This is actually what I was planning to do before I changed my mind, which I'll get to at the end of this video. If you are thinking about doing the part-time masters, there are two sort of core schools that I came across that I was really considering. The first one was at the MCS program at UIUC, and the second one was the OMSCS program at Georgia Tech. To compare these two together, the UIUC MCS program is shorter than Georgia Tech, but it is more expensive than Georgia Tech, and it is a bit more competitive to get it, which essentially means that Georgia Tech is longer, but more affordable and easier for you to get it. The other little nuance here is that the UIUC program actually offers you a Master of Computer Science, and the Georgia Tech program offers you the traditional masters of science in computer science. This difference are pretty niche here. I don't think it'll actually end up 
mattering all that much in your career outcomes, but the MCS program is a bit more of what's called a professional degree and not necessarily a science degree the way the Georgia Tech one is. But at the end of the day, these are both well vetted and highly respected schools, particularly in the sort of tech and computer science scene. So you can't go wrong with either one. And so now if you're wondering, Mark, what about you? What did you end up deciding? For me, I actually ended up not going down the path of doing a master's program. For a long time, I felt like I would have done a part-time one as I was starting my new grad journey. But honestly, at this point, I've reached a stage where I don't think the added credibility of a master's program is worth the tuition or even just the time sacrifice that it'll take for me. And I do have more things on my plate now that I get far more excited about devoting myself to. And a good example of that is making these videos. Honestly, the time it takes me to make these videos might have to get replaced with studying for proctor exams in my master's degree, which isn't really all that exciting anymore. So if you watch this video and you're like, Mark, I'm thinking of not doing the master's program. I just want to jump straight into the workforce. Then I highly recommend you check out this video on how to find software engineering jobs. I'll see you on the next one.